everyone, it's Shannon from Stampendously Shannon. So I'm just coming to you today to do a planner page, a Stampin' Up! planner page. So I decided today to use the Share a Milkshake stamp set, and I pre-made some of these cute little um, ice creams here. And so you can make ice creams using the die, or you can also make various little ice cream dishes. So these are little milkshakes, like actual malted milkshakes, and then these are the ice cream cones. And the die set actually comes with both of these options, so you can cut out the milkshakes with the little straws, or you can get these little ice cream cones. So I made a few, and I thought I would make one to show you kind of how it comes out and how I put mine together. Uh, and then also, um, basically it's the exact same here. So, you know, you have your base piece, you put this piece on top. So these are really cute. And it does cut this little slit in the ice cream so that you can tuck your little straw in there too. So very, very cute. So let's go ahead and show how this goes together real quick. And we will, I just put a little tiny bit of uh, stamp and seal right at the edge and I move this down and then I double check to make sure that it's completely covered. So I kind of have it down. So if you put your littlest ice cream, there's two different ice creams. There's this overflowing one that kind of hangs over the edge of your malted milk glass. And then there's this slightly smaller one um, that has a, a flat edge on the bottom, which goes in your little ice cream dish here. And I just line that edge up with the very edges. So I go all the way down until it's each of the sides is touching it. And that to me is the perfect place for it. Just like that. And uh, you'll want to fold in one of the sides is has a flat edge and one of the sides has more of a crinkly edge. So it, it, um, it crinkles and then a, a longer straight edge and then a longer crinkly edge and a shorter straight edge. So you want to put the longer one in and fold the more crinkly one on the side there. So let's go ahead and do that too. And same deal, I just kind of put it on the edges and then fold it over. It's very simple to make these little guys. And really, I made all of this with scraps. So I did not use any new sheets of paper. I just went through my scrap bin, found a bunch of different colors of brown. So this is cinnamon cider. This is actually a retired color. But I used um, early espresso. I used soft suede. Just a teeny bit of stamp and seal there. Um, I used, this is soft suede, early espresso, I think this is crumb cake, and I used parakeet party uh, on this one here, and then pale papaya, and sweet sorbet for the ice creams. So I'm going to add these to my planner page because I thought it would be fun. They're they're flat, right? So it's, it's 3D, but it is flat, so it'll still go really nicely in my planner. It's not going to create any you know, ripples or anything like that, like an embellishment would, but it still gives the page some dimension. And I think that's going to be super, super fun. So I'm just going to attach these with stamp and seal too. I think I'm going to try to do maybe five of them. Uh, so we'll see how many we can attach here. I'm just, again, going to use stamp and seal, and then we're going to go back and we're going to do some really pretty stamping on the page too. So I'm just going to kind of lay him cattywampus there, just a little slightly, slight lean. And same thing with this one. I'm going to try to get maybe one of each of the colors of cone on here that I have. I thought this one was fun because it kind of looked like a chocolate cone, um, a little bit darker. So we'll go ahead and put him up here on Monday and Tuesday. Oh my gosh. There we go. I swear my stamp and steel just has so much tape on the outside. I have some on order, so I'm really excited to get my new ones. And let's go ahead and do one more cone. And actually we may need, three might be enough, but we'll do, yeah, we'll do him as a lean. I think, I think he'll lean kind of like this. We'll see, see if that works. And you can see some white out here. So this is actually a recycled page. So I had written on this page and then um, ended up not using my planner as much the next week. So decided to, sometimes I'll just leave it. Uh, sometimes I will actually white out over it um, so I can kind of conserve pages. So the Stampin' Up! Planner is an undated planner. 
So you can, the, so the months are dated, but the actual weeks themselves are undated. So you're able to create whatever week you're on for this. So I whited out what I had written down for some of the things, uh, and then I'm just going to kind of write over it or add some paper or some really pretty embellishments and things. Um, so a couple of things that I thought I wanted to put on my page here. Um, so these are all of the stamps. I wanted to do this spoon because I thought that was cute. Um, I thought adding a couple of little drips would be cute. And then I wanted to do some of these sentiments. So I thought this life is sweeter with you was really cute. And I also thought this um, you're the cherry on top was really cute. Uh, and then of course we can add some of our little dishes if we'd like. And maybe we'll do that just so I can show you the two stamping process for this. And uh, we'll do one more ice cream too. Obviously, we would have had ice cream with our little bowl here. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So we have, uh, let's do this. And I'm going to kind of try to stick to the theme that we have here. So I'm going to stick with the... Pale Papaya, Parakeet Party, Real Red, and Pool Party. So let's go ahead and do our Life is Sweeter with You in the green, because I the Parakeet Party, because I think that would be just so cute. And we don't have any green on this page, so I'm going to actually stamp, I'm going to stamp above that white out there, and I'm also going to choose, um, this is a Saturday, so I don't, I don't have a ton of stuff going on on Saturday, this week, fortunately, or I guess next week. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp that right there. Oh, so cute. It's a little crooked, but that's okay because I think this little guy is crooked too. So that does not bother me. So we'll set him off to the side now. And then we're gonna do our You're the Cherry on top too. So let's put our sentiments on there. Sentiments are a little bit bigger. So I wanna make sure that I have enough room on my page to add the sentiments and still have room to write, make this functional. And um, maybe we'll have room up here for the other things, but these by far are the more important items, I think, because I want to have some cute little sayings in my planner here. Let's move these off to the side. And we're going to put this right up here. You're the cherry on top. And it's on the top of our week. Perfect. So we will take that one off. And sometimes I don't... Sometimes I don't... Uh, take all the stamps out like I did today. Today I'm, I'm being brave uh, both with stamp sets and with the ink pads. I'm just leaving them open. Um, so let's go ahead and do our little drops here. Like our little ice cream cone is melting. And this is pale papaya. So we want to make sure that we're doing it on the pale papaya ice cream, right? Because that's where it's going to leak. There we go. Now I did that over the whiteout. So the whiteout will eventually, it will eventually dry on there, but, and, and that may depend on what kind of whiteout you use. For my whiteout, it will eventually dry on there, but I just want to be careful and very conscientious of it because it will not dry for a while. Uh, and then we will also do our little spoon or let's do our dish first. So I wanted to show how this dish goes together. So there's two different ways. Um, you can stamp with one color and then stamp in another color, of course, or probably the more popular way, and I, I think personally the way that maybe two-step stamping is supposed to be. There's no police, but, you know, they're the way that it's supposed to be. Um, you're going to stamp and then stamp off. So let me get a little piece here. And then you're going to stamp wherever you want it. So we want ours right here. All right, so you can barely see it, but it's still there. And then we're going to take our, our other image here, the inside of our bowl, and we are going to stamp it inside. So I'm gonna need to get a little lower here. And we're just going to stamp on the inside of that bowl. And now you can see that it creates this little ripple line and it creates this, you know, the shadow of having ice cream inside of your bowl. So that is how that is done. And that is exactly how this one is done too. Now I tried doing the little 
uh, milkshake glass here. I tried doing that with different colors. So I tried balmy blue and I tried, I actually tried using vellum and I also tried using uh, acrylic, the uh, acrylic sheets, but I personally liked the pool party the best. Of all of the colors that I tried this glass in, my pool party was my absolute favorite, which I'm kind of biased anyways. I really like pool party. It's probably my favorite Stampin' Up! color, but um, it, it did really, truly, I think, work really well. So let's go ahead and do our ice cream too. So we're done with our little dish and let's get our ice cream stamped in there. So we are going to do it in uh, sweet sorbet, which is the color of our ice cream over here, but we don't have any sweet sorbet over here. So I think that this will be a perfect color for this. And actually I think, oops, this is real red. That's okay. I think so poppy parade and real red and sweet sorbet. They are different colors, but I think that they mesh really nicely. Actually, I don't think that they, it is obvious that they are different, but it's also not you know, the end of the world to me if I have to kind of replace one for the other. So, and of course that looks really dark, but it's going to lighten up here in just a bit. And then our lastly, we're going to do our little spoon and we're going to do our spoon just kind of right next to him. So let's go ahead and get our spoon stamped and we're going to use gray granite, which is kind of like a brown gray. Um, I think smoky slate would also be a good color for a spoon. Of course you can do you can do a spoon in any color you want. Um, I'm going to do it in a real spoon color. Like a silver spoon kind of color. There we go. So we have our page here. And so we need to add, I think what we're missing is maybe some pretty paper. So we are going to use this beautiful print here, which is the Country Gingham, I believe. And we are just going to make some cute little borders in this. So there are two sides. Um, this is, oh, maybe a blushing bride. And then this is a balmy blue. But I'm going to use it because I think it looks pretty close to pool party. And then this is actually a scrap that I had from a couple of cards that I made with the stamp set. Because I do think this paper just pairs super cute, super nicely with the share milkshake. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this little piece, try to use it up out of my scrap bin. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make some border edge pieces here. So we're gonna do probably maybe like maybe an inch or so, maybe, what is that, seven? Yeah, like three quarters of an inch. And that, let's see how much that'll cover. Cause I wanna do a little piece on this side and a little piece on this side. Um, and I'm trying to decide if I like the pink or the blue, and I think I like the blue best. So we will do a little piece on this side. And I just need a pencil because I'm going to make a little mark here and then trim that off. Let's grab that. And then this piece might be a little smaller, but what we can do, I'm just going to put it up here at the top. Um, I'm not, I don't. This weekly priorities, um, it may not bother someone, um, but it, I don't, it's not my favorite. So I like to cover it up because I would rather look at something super pretty um, than have just some gray text on there. So I can use this and if you want to write something else, like the month maybe, um, or maybe like the days, like, you know, January X through Y or whatever, um, you can definitely just put like maybe a little white piece over the top of it but that will also cover up our week of, which I also like too. Um, and then we can kind of refocus what we're gonna do up there. So let's go ahead and trim this piece off here. And my stampin', um, my stamp, what are they called? My paper snips. Uh, my Stampin' Up! paper snips are missing. I don't know where they went. So I'm using a different pair of scissors here, but I miss my Stampin', uh, stampin Up! paper snips. And I'm trying to think, hmm, maybe, you know what, maybe we'll cut two strips and we'll do the blue all the way across. I think that'll be really cute. Let's do that. And we have this weekly priorities up here too. So I have to decide maybe do I want to do another piece or do I just want to leave that one? Do I just want to use white out? So we'll think about it. We'll think about it where we're doing this piece down here. 
we go. Perfect. Um, and then I will cover up weekly goals and I have an idea for that. So this is a retired punch. This is the classic label punch. And it, again, it is retired, but there are some similar things to this one. Um, they might be a little bit bigger, but the double oval punch is one that I might use for this. Um, trying to think. Uh, there's also some tag dies that you could use. You could cut a strip and then just um, kind of trim the edges. But we're just going to cover up those weekly goals there. Because um, I'm going to decide what I want to do with this little box over here. It may still be a to-do box, but it's going to be a really pretty to-do box. And maybe I will use my new making plan stamp set, which despite it coming with the planner, I have not used um, in the planner. So I've used it for other things, but not, not obviously in the planner. So I'm excited to do that. And one thing, let's just make sure. Perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut another strip. So that was a one inch or three quarter inch strip, I believe. That might be a little too big. We'll see. I said three quarters of an inch, and I think I made it a little bit bigger. Nope. Perfect. Okay. And then we're going to do the same little approximation here, too. So, of course, you can measure this and then, you know, maybe save a strip going the other way. But I'm okay with just cutting it as is. We'll just make a little mark. And go ahead and trim that off. Boop. Right. And then these are probably, this is a probably about the size of scrap that I throw away. <laughs> um, otherwise I save, I save a lot of little pieces, um, mostly because I do find use for them or I have like, you know, oh, I use that tiny strip one time, like this white strip here. I just used it to make a punch out of it. So I do save, especially white. I save a ton of, of scraps and white. And I just have a little dish, a little um, coffee mug that doesn't fit in my extensive coffee mug collection in the kitchen, but it does fit on my craft desk and it just holds all my little white pieces. So when I do need a little piece of white, I can just really quickly grab one out of there. So there's that. Perfect. And then I think what we need is maybe we do need something that cuts across here. So I guess, I don't know if I like that print because it's a different print up at the top. And we could do the pink, but then we didn't do the pink. So maybe we should have done the pink on this side. It's too late now. So let's go ahead and get a different sheet and get this blue piece. All right, so let's go ahead and cut. Now I am gonna measure this strip because I do want it to match on either side. I want it to kind of be like a bookend, right? So let's see, this piece is about four inches and then it's about, oh, it's going to be about the same size. So about three quarters of an inch. So let's cut that. So three quarters of an inch. And then we have four inches. Let's go this way. And then that piece, maybe I'll save. And this piece looks a little skinnier. Okay, but maybe it's not. Okay, it looks a little skinnier. Maybe it is, we'll find out. Or maybe we won't find out. Maybe we'll just put it on and it'll just look the same. That'll be fine. But if it is a little skinnier, I'm not that worried about it. Again, it's your planner, so you can kind of do whatever you'd like to do. So let's cover up that weekly priorities on this side too, so we don't have that text up at the top. And maybe what we'll do, I'm gonna go ahead and add another one of these classic labels up to this top section over here so that I can actually write the month on there. I can write January. Just like that. And let's get this taped down. And again, it's okay if there's a little bit, little bit of dimension on your page because, you know, it's gonna get smashed down as you go. And perfect. And then I think using a red, oh my gosh, I cannot. Okay, so now, just before we keep going with our items here, I'm just gonna go ahead and write the month up here. 
And then I do need to fill in some stuff. I want to make sure we get everything in the actual planner itself. I'm going to use this green. It's a Paper Mate Ink Joy. But I think it looks very similar to Parakeet Party. And you could certainly actually use the Parakeet Party Stamp and Write marker. Um, I like the... Oh boy, anybody else having one of those weeks? So, uh, camera died. So we're just going to keep on going just like it didn't happen. Um, so all I did was I dated everything and I filled in some of the information for the planner. Um, really at this point, I just want to make sure that I get all of the information in the planner, um, everything that I need. So I have a line for dinners. I have some, you know, different appointments and dates that I need to remember. Um, I'm using another planner that I use as kind of like a backup planner and like a pre-scheduling planner so that I have plenty of space in this one to actually write down what's happening. So I do need, I have a couple of to-dos for next week. So I'm just going to go ahead and make some circles in this bottom corner down here so that I can check them off as I do them. So next week I have to do a library drop. My books are due. And I also have to go to Lowe's. We are doing some home renovations and I need to get the items that we need for that. And then I need to also do the um, some chores here. And one of those is a Goodwill run. And I may get to that tomorrow, we'll see. And I also need to um, organize the master closet. And our last little dot here is going to be putting finish putting away Christmas. It takes me forever to put Christmas away. Um, I just I have a lot of Christmas decor. And it takes me so long to put it up that I like to relish it. And then when it's time to put it away, I go really slow. So we have Christmas decor everywhere. So I do need to actually finish putting Christmas away. Christmas put away. And I'm hoping to get that done this weekend too, but we'll see. Um, it may not happen. So that is our little design here. Uh, it still feels kind of empty to me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these little hearts and I'm just going to kind of put them around the page just kind of sporadically and I'm going to do it in a lighter color so that way it doesn't bleed through the page. Um, if you do it in the red, so let's flip that over. So really it didn't bleed through at all which is fantastic. So these pages are pretty thick so if you hold it up to the light you can kind of see it but if I were to use this page you wouldn't even be able to see that there's red on the back. But I still like the idea of putting some. We have now a lot of parakeet party I think we have a good distribution of the Sweet Sorbet. We have a good distribution of the Pool Party. So let's go ahead and get some more pale papaya on here and stamp these cutie little hearts kind of all over the page. And also being cognizant of where our other words need to go. So like I need to fill in the dinners for the week and um, I guess I could have done that since my phone died and I didn't get around to, I didn't, I didn't finish before that happened. And you can see I missed a spot. So I'm just going to try to layer that over. Some stamps I will not recommend doing this, but these ones are really little and I think we can maybe do it. Yeah, see? Um, so for those kinds of things, usually I'd be like, oh my gosh, get the stamparatus out, figure that out. But for these little tiny hearts, they're, they're pretty simple. And for really intricate designs, I would say, oh my gosh, please, you know, get your Stamparatus out. But for this, eh, this little hearts are pretty simple. And we'll go ahead and we'll do another little guy right here too. So lots of, uh, okay, so see, I stamped on top of that white out and it didn't take very well. So we're going to have to do that again. I think I need to figure out my setup because I feel like I get nervous to stamp with my with my head in the way. 
Um, and you can see here that the stamp actually picked up some of that white out. Actually, you can see that really well on that. Um, you can almost see it better on the camera than you can in person. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to take a scrap piece of paper and I'm just going to comb it off. I use a tape and not a liquid whiteout when I do mine. So it just kind of, you know, as it comes off, it just kind of comes off in chunks. And I'm okay with that little hole being there because it's probably going to get written over anyway because I realized I missed a dinner line right there. So let's just go ahead and write that in so I don't forget. And I always, I always put the dinner. I don't do a lot of meal prepping, um, but I do a lot of meal planning. So I will actually write down like what we're going to have each day for dinner. That way when I go grocery shopping, I know exactly what to buy. I don't have to go up to the store a million times. And um, it also helps me remember to take things out, right? So in the morning, I'm like, okay, uh, we're having chicken. So I need to take out chicken tonight so that I don't forget, or chicken tonight or that morning. Um, so I don't forget to do that and we don't have to eat out or we have to eat something, you know, um, like a frozen pizza or something like that, which are delicious, but of course not not something you want to do every single day. You get tired of frozen pizza. So there's that. So I think those little hearts added something and we are going to go ahead. I'm going to do some up here too. I guess I kind of forgot about up here. They're cute. Okay. So I think that adds a little something extra. And then of course, as the week goes on, I will be adding new things into the planner. So I'll be making some changes. I'll be adding some more maybe words or different things. Um, but this is really the, my goal was to show you that you can use, you know, non-flat elements in your planner. And also with these pages, they're pretty thick. So you can stamp on them uh, and nothing will bleed through. So theoretically, blends will bleed through. <laughs> um, but most of the markers and, and most of the, the actual ink pads and things will not be through. And I think one of the reasons I wanted to do that in Sweet Sorbet was to kind of show that because I feel like red is a pretty big culprit for leaking through. So Pale Papaya may or may not leak through um, on a lot of other planners, but I feel like the Sweet Sorbet, or excuse me, this is real red. So I feel like the real red definitely would have. Um, but so now we have this cute little spread. So we can add this to our planner. Let's get our planner out. And let's go ahead and pull this up. So I don't do planner. I try to do the planner every single week. I always do my my like backup planner every single week. But having this one is super fun. I think it it really motivates me to, to, you know, check off these things in my pretty planner. Um, and it's really pretty to look at. So that is the week. So it's January 23rd through the 29th. And, um, I hope that this inspires you to open up your planner and to use it. And of course, you know, you can definitely use Stampin' Up! stamps and, um, you know, all sorts of other Stampin' Up! products inside of any planner, uh, one thing I would caution is just make sure that you test the edge of a paper maybe to make sure that if you decide to stamp on it, maybe it won't leak through to the backside. I have used blends in my planner before um, with thinner pages and it did bleed through to the other side. And the next week I just kind of strategically covered those spots up. So that way I wouldn't have any uh, of those spots kind of showing through on the other side. So I, I think that is all I have for you today. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out so we can see. Um, and this is the January spread or I guess the weekly spread for this week of January. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks so much.